Welcome to Mommy Space. My name is Brianna Bernhard, your hostess, and I am a new mom. I selfishly created this podcast to get some advice and inspiration from the moms in my community who are doing amazing things while raising their families. I've realized motherhood is hard, but knowing I'm not alone in this call makes all the difference, and I hope you feel refreshed as you listen. Welcome to the tribe. Welcome back to Mommy's Space. This is Bree, and today I'm here with Aubrey Coots. Aubrey, welcome to the show. Hi, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Yay, we're laughing because I just said her last name wrong and had to redo that, so just a little bit there for you. Anyways, um, I've known you, Aubrey, since actually middle school. Um, yeah. I think we went to sixth grade together, and then yeah. um, I don't, I think that was it. Yeah, was that it? I think so. I think so. Um. But I have a very special memory of you, and oh, I wanted gosh. to share. <laughs> I wanted to share this only because, and it'll sound so funny now. But um, uh, oh, no. one there was <laughs> there was this point where we had um, a mutual friend who had a birthday party. I don't even know if you'll remember this, but it was such an it, like it impacted me more than you'll ever know. Like it was so oh my gosh. so huge to me. No, it's really good. <laughs> okay. So um we had a mutual friend who had a birthday party. It was probably in like seventh or eighth grade. I don't know one of those years. And um the night was getting late and everyone was kind of playing around and I had a couple of the friends there who were picking on me and like kind of jabbing around and making fun of me a little bit and I was like taking it really personal and it was like really hard for me and I was probably just really tired but you had gone into the other room and you were on another couch it basically seemed like you were just trying to get out of the room because you were tired and needed to sleep or something so I didn't know you were in there I went into the other room and I had been crying and you were like oh my gosh what's wrong and I kind of downloaded it to you and you were like seriously and like you ended up like telling him off and I was like oh my god you're my hero <laughs> like Aww. it was so it was so impactful for me because I was such in a tender place and blah, blah, blah. anyways Aww. I just wanted to say thank you for that because I don't know that Aww. I actually ever did and yeah. it was a very very sweet memory to have of you since Aww, we haven't had a ton really of sweet. yeah so anyways that's how I know you um well, I'm glad I was on that end and not the other end of that story oh yes you were very much so um thank you and if I were you I think I remembered also that your family called you Brie growing up yeah. too is that true mm-hmm. so we had yeah. that in common too that was fun yeah anyways little throwback there but yeah, um that's awesome I'm excited to talk to you today because of your unique position as a mama um, to some foster kids and just want to talk to you about your journey there and what that's all look like. But kind of before we start, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you guys are located, um, that kind of stuff, and then we'll kind of dive in. Great. Um, I, um, me and my husband live in Riverside, California, and we've been married almost four years. It'll be four years in August. And, um, yeah, we are going into our fourth year of campus ministry at Cal Baptist University. Uh, so we both graduated from Cal Baptist and, met there and then, um, the college ministry, I wasn't super involved, but my husband was really involved, um, during college. And then after I graduated, um, started kind of helping out more. And then we ended up, um, joining staff almost four years ago. Wow. So Yeah. Yeah. So my role looks a lot different now that we have kids and I'm home a lot more, but, um, it's just like a really cool discipleship pro- program on campus nice. with college students. And so we have a lot of different ways of doing that, but wow. yeah, so, so that's a big, a big thing that we do. Um, that's great. Yeah. Very cool. All right, cool. So I just wanted to start off basically um, kind of having you share your story of how you got into foster care, um, what that journey's looked like. Uh, was that a choice um, to start out fostering? Um, and yeah, we'll just start there. How about, how about okay. that? Okay. Yeah. Um, so for myself personally, I always knew um, that I wanted to adopt um, from a young age. And I don't even really, I don't 
I can't pinpoint why exactly. Growing up, my parents had kind of like thrown out the idea of adoption and they actually were a host family for an organization um, for several years where kids would come from other countries to the States to have surgery. So we had wow. like um, six different boys in our home um, wow. for like six months to a year at a time while they were like getting surgeries um, here. So it wasn't typical like foster care. They had homes and families that they came from, but just that exposure to having people, you know, in our family. I don't know if like that was a part of it. I think there was a few different mm -hmm. um, parts to that. But when me and my husband got married, um, we were both on the same page. He had always wanted to adopt too. Mm -hmm. And so we um, kind of started just generally talking about that a bit more and um, looking into international adoption because that's kind of always where my mind had gone For sure. um, and learned really quickly um, how expensive international adoption is. And mm. there's still definitely such a need for that. And if the Lord has that for us someday, yeah. then we would move forward with that. But we both graduated from a private university and have plenty of um, student loans we're trying <laughs> yeah. to pay off. So we were like, okay, yeah. we probably shouldn't go into more debt to start our family. Yeah. Um, and at right around that same time, um, a, a family from actually at that time, they weren't at our church or we weren't at their church rather, but um, some good friends of ours were at the very beginning stages of um, fostering. They got a little boy when he was about a week old, and we got to walk, watch them walk through the whole journey of fostering to adopt, mm -hmm. and they ended up adopting him when he was about a year and a half, um, and we got to be there. We got to be, oh like, in the courtroom when they adopted, and um, even prior to them finalizing adoption, um, sorry, I'm a, a little all over no, the place. Okay. I'll backtrack a yeah, little yeah. bit. Yeah, um, um, before even getting to see that happen, I think it was like probably six months before that, we started talking about um, wanting to grow our family. And my husband had always preferred to adopt first. Really? Um, before, yeah. And, wow. and I, for us, like, and I could get into this a bit more later, but just the concept of adoption, like we're followers of Jesus. And so we believe that, uh, we've been adopted into God's family, and um, that's always been a big motivation for us mm -hmm. to want to um, adopt and have our family be a representation of the gospel. Wow. And so um, through, so because of that, my husband was like, wouldn't it be cool if we adopted first? So it was never an afterthought. Mm -hmm. It was never, if we do have biological kids, you know, they're like, well, those are your real kids. And we just wow. came, you know. Yeah, totally. Um, and that's not, I mean families all choose to oh, do sure. different orders and things like that. That was just something he had mentioned. Wow. And I actually was like, well, but I want to have our own kids first and then adopt. And he's like, Aubrey, like any children that are in our family forever are our kids. Mm, and wow. I had no good come back to that. It was like <laughs> a good like perspective <laughs> shift for me, like instantly wow. where I was like, oh yeah. Like, that's so true. You know, any children that we adopt are just as much ours yeah. as any biological kids. So um, all that to say, we, about two years ago, um, yeah, two years ago, we started the process of becoming certified um, to become foster parents. And our hope was to um, adopt through foster care. Mm -hmm. And we were open to, like, from the beginning, we know that in foster care, a lot of the times it's kind of like a 50, 50, um, chance of like, okay, they could be reunified, um, which would be awesome. You know, if, totally. if their biological parents are able to turn their lives around and be a safe and loving home, then yeah. we're all for that. Like mm. we think that that's amazing and so important. Um, and even that I think was like a way that God grew my view of foster care. Mm. Cause initially I was like, I just want to go in, adopt, get out. Mm, totally. <laughs> uh, and in the last couple of years, that's shifted a lot wow. for just various reasons with our story. But mm. um, so we started that process and then um, it took about six months before we became um, certified foster parents. Mm. Um, I don't know if I'm even answering your You're, initial no, question. No, just go for it. That's okay. This is perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you want me to just keep going? Keep going. Keep going. Okay. And if I have a question, I'll interject or whatever. Okay. Great. Yeah. Great. 
So, um, yeah, we started the process. We went through an organization or a foster agency um, called Quinnenia Family Services, um, and they have offices all over um, California. But we um, did training through them, and we became certified, I think it was March of last year, 2017. Um, and then April, um, April 3rd, we got a phone call for two little girls. Um, actually, a girlfriend, the one that adopted the little boy through mm -hmm. foster care, she called me and said, would you guys be interested in taking a one-month-old baby boy? Because her wow. sister is a social so initially we thought we were getting a one month old baby boy and we were back and forth on the phone with the social worker mm. and, um, he was out, that baby was out in LA County. Long story short, that baby ended up, um, not needing to be placed into okay. a foster home. Um, but because they already had us kind of like, okay, oh. we're ready. They were like, well, we're actually looking for a home for these two little girls. Mm. Um, and so I didn't think I'd get emotional oh. yet. I'm <laughs> you can just cut out this you're like... so good you're so good <laughs> yeah so we ended up saying yes initially we had said we want one baby under one year this call was for a six-month-old baby girl and an almost two-year-old wow. girl a sister said and so we said yes and they're like okay well with foster care, things are always kind of moving fast or slow or you don't really know. And so just be ready. And if they're going to come to you, someone will call you in the next few hours. <laughs> what? So I like wow. raised home from we got a second um, bed set up, a toddler bed set up because we were only expecting one. So we just had a crib. Wow. And um, 930 that night, we were still waiting for a call to confirm. A social worker said, um, my GPS says I'm about 30 minutes out. I'll be there soon with the Oh girl. my gosh, that's crazy. So we hadn't even like told our parents yet. I mean, Whoa. they knew we were certified, yeah. but we hadn't like told them like, hey, this is a possibility because we were still waiting to hear if it would even happen. So we like called our parents, oh called some gosh. of our best friends, and we were like, we're getting two little gir girls in 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. Um, and that night, I just remember laying in bed being like, what are we doing? <laughs> we have like two babies in the room next to us. Oh my gosh. That our t like our the oldest was terrified and our nicknames Aww. for them were um our Lala and Nunu, which were just like silly Aww. like names, but um so that's what I'll refer to them as. Yep, but yep. Lala, the oldest, was um just about to turn two and she was terrified that first night. And the first six weeks were super hard. Um I couldn't even like go to the bathroom without her yeah. having a complete screaming meltdown, banging wow. on the door. Like she was just terrified. She was so scared and confused and couldn't communicate because she's still so little. She was just about to turn two. Um, and I think it was so amazing to see how God <laughs> gave us patience and like, I don't know, oh my grace to make it through each day. But um, just as time went on and she got more comfortable and more confident and I think just felt loved and safe, she started coming out of her shell. And um, so we had Lala and Nunu for 11 months. Um, and about halfway through that time, we found out that they had some family members that were trying to get approved to um, have them placed with them. And in the foster system, they always prefer to keep children with their family members. Sure, sure. Uh, and for our girls, it was their first time in foster care. So wow. even now, the chances of them reunifying with their birth with their birth mom are still um, it's still a possibility. So they could still end up even going back to their mom at okay. this point. Um, but in February, they moved to an aunt and uncle, and um, it was honestly like I think one of the hardest things that we've ever gone through. Um, we, um, it just felt like such a loss. I mean, yeah. they felt like ours from the beginning and we knew that they, they weren't and they, their parents were still in the picture and, and through that, um, this is like another thing I think I've just learned through foster care is growing in my love for birth families. Mm. Um, I oh. think that I had this view of like, 
these kids are coming from terrible situations and a lot of them are. Um, but just seeing, I think like the pain of what addiction can do to a family and how it like tears family apart or tears families apart, um, was so heartbreaking and our girls had eight hours of visitation every week. So we drove to LA twice a week, um, so that they could see their um, birth mom and birth dad. And so we actually built like a pretty good relationship with them in that time and got to talk to them about Jesus. And, um, even the aunt and uncle that the girls moved to, we got to share with them. And, um, even now the aunt, still will text me about, you know, books that I've sent her or things like that. And she's like, I feel like I'm still learning more and more about God. And so I just like, as, as hard as that was to go through, um, I don't think that God's done even Mm. in that family. And I'm really, I feel really thankful that we got to be a part of that. Um, yeah, but the girls have forever Mm. changed us and, and I think going through that loss, um, a lot of people were like, well, you guys jumped back into it really quickly. And I was talking to a friend who experienced a miscarriage and I'm like, I've, I've never been pregnant. Um, I've never experienced a miscarriage. And so I don't know, um, what that feels like, but I was talking to her and I'm like, I feel like going through that loss, it's such a heavy thing and such a hard thing. But at the end of that, you're like, well, I'm never going to try to get pregnant again. Mm. I can't do that again because the pain was too great. It's like, no, like Mm. I love that baby that I lost however long they were in you Mm. and you want to do it again because you Mm. still want to grow your family and you still have this love Mm. that you want to give to children that need it. Um, And when I was talking to a friend about that, she's like, I think that's spot on. You know, Mm. it's a different situation but kind of comparable in the sense where it's oh, like yeah. experience this loss but it's not like okay I'm done I can check off right. my foster box and <laughs> work on getting pregnant you yeah, know totally um wow. I think for me I just through that process learned um how great the need was mm-hmm. and I think that was a big um knowing that it hurts but we're we're gonna be okay yeah we can do it again yeah. I think helped motivate us to to move forward wow that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> That's a lot. So oh, <laughs> I like um, my husband and I are also interested in adoption and I have been more interested in foster care actually since starting this podcast just because I've talked to a couple other moms who have done that or have pursued adoption or foster care. And I just get like uh, I get overwhelmed with um, I don't know. I don't know if it's excitement or emotion or probably all of the above, but it's just really inspiring. I remember watching you just from afar. I didn't really know all the details of what you guys were going through, but I remember seeing you guys have like a a baby shower even like is yeah. that's before you knew anything, right? Like yeah. any placement or wow. Yeah. So that yeah. was just kind of exciting. I'm like, is she pregnant? I don't think she's pregnant. Yeah. And then I would read into <laughs> it more and be like, wow, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. really amazing. And yeah. So, um, yeah. So bring us up to speed now. Like, where are you guys at? Like, um, I know you, yeah. you have some more kiddos in your home now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we um, actually, the day after the girls left, started praying about um, the children that would come into our home mm-hmm. next. And um, we weren't sure when that would be or what that would look like. Um, but in foster care, there's kind of two, I don't want to say two routes, but in a sense, like there's, um, just like emergency placement where kids are taken from their, their home. A lot of the times their biological parents home and brought to a foster home or there's matching and matching is kids that have been in the system for a while and they're getting towards the end of their case and they're looking for adoptive homes. Okay. So this time around we prayed about going that route and that's what we're in right now. Um, So about two weeks after the girls left, we heard about this sibling set of three kiddos, ages three, two, and one. Um, And we just inquired about them and wanted to learn a little bit more about their situation, what that would look like. Um, And a couple weeks after that, we had a meeting with their social worker and got to hear all about them and their case and hear that... um, Unfortunately, 
their mom is close to losing her um, parental rights, and so they were they were looking for an adoptive home. Yeah. Um, so uh, we got to start having visits with them just so they'd become more familiar with us before they even moved into our home. So that was like so different because mm. it wasn't like scrambling to get a bed together. Yeah. We knew for like three weeks that these wow. kids were coming to us. So we got to, you know, wow. get the room ready and get them some clothes and things like that. And they were actually in a loving, awesome foster home before they came Good. to us. Um, that family just only fosters. They're not looking to adopt. So that's why they're looking for um, a home that would be willing to adopt. Mm -hmm. So our kiddos moved in um, April 12th. We're coming up on oh, no, wow. April 12th or 13th. 12th. Yeah. So it'll be three <laughs> months tomorrow. I didn't wow. think um, yeah. And so they have been with us for about three months. Oh um, and it's so busy. And I was used to having two little girls for a year. So I have two boys, the boys are three and two and our little girl is one. Wow. Um, and, um, so the oldest is almost four. And we were told that there was some, um, like, learning delays, things like that. We didn't know like how severe. So, um, we got our kids and both our boys have pretty delayed speech. Mm. So I felt like instantly I had three babies that I wow. couldn't compete with. And so that was a, a new challenge. Also, boys are just way more active. Yeah. Than That's what I've heard. <laughs> I was like, okay, I've done two girls uh -huh. and they could like sit inside and color and, mm -hmm. you know, play dolls all day. Um, after a week of having our kids, I started looking into homes because we were in a townhouse apartment wow. and it was way too tight. And oh, so yeah. that was like a God thing in itself. No like way. two weeks later, we applied for a rent, like to rent a home and we got approved. And two weeks after that, we got the keys. So one oh, month exactly after we got our kids, we moved into a home. Wow. Yeah. So that was oh like a totally year, and now we have a lot more space and a big yard and wow. the boys love it. So, um, that's been really amazing. And, um, even now, so now, yeah, like I said, tomorrow will be three months. Um, the first six weeks again, I don't know if the six weeks is just like the golden number of hardness <laughs> yeah, or <maybe>. adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first six weeks were, were really hard. And I think it may have maybe also because we moved on top of it. Well, so it's yeah, just sure. extra, um, an extra dynamic. But um, yeah, I think now the other day, my husband and I were talking and we feel like we're like, okay, we've kind of figured out what our groove looks mm. like, what our family like rhythm looks like. And we're loving it. Like we're, yeah. I feel like our kids are like, okay, we know our routine and we know kind of how things work around here. Yeah. And um from day one, they've called us mommy and daddy. No we never way. had said anything. So we're not even really sure how that happened. Wow. Um, but yeah, we're, we're thankful for that. Um, mm. And we do still have visitation with their birth mom once a month for a couple of hours. So they do see her and they call her mom okay. and they always call me mommy. So even mm. in their little heads, I think mm -hmm. they can differentiate yeah. that, you know, different roles. Um, they don't, they don't have like a really, um, they don't know their birth mom very well. They haven't lived with her very much of their lives. Um, but I got to have a really cool conversation with her about a month ago and, um, she was just very blunt. She's like, are you going to adopt these kids? And I, I told her, I was like, well, it's not up to us, but if it gets to that point and we can, we would love to. Mm -hmm. And her biggest concern was that we would cut all ties with her. And mm. like, like I shared before, my heart has like changed a lot towards birth parents wow. in this process. Mm. And I got to tell her, I was like, we would love to stay in contact with you. And as long as you're a safe person, yeah. we'd love to keep you updated on how the kids are. And maybe at certain points we could get together and see each other. And she was so relieved by that. Mm. And so I, I just like hope that God continues to like open wow. doors for us to have good communication with her. And if this does turn into adoption down the road, um, that that's a relationship we can maintain. Wow. We want our kids, our, our children are African American. Yes. And so, and I'm white and my husband's Mexican. So our family is very colorful. Like the most diverse, beautiful <laughs> family um, unit. So 
So, I mean, we there's no way of tricking our kids to think that they came from us. <laughs> so yeah. we, we really want our children, like, to know their story um, and to know the part of their story even before my husband and I came into the picture. Mm. And so we're going, even after adoption, like, we want to keep the names that their mom gave them at birth. Yeah. And we want to keep some kind of relationship with her because that's a part of their story and that's wow. important. So that's yeah, that's where we're at with that. And then this is like a little side part, yeah. but kind of fun. Um, so their birth mom is actually expecting, she's having a baby boy in September. So we could be getting a fourth. <gasps> in September. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> okay. I like, I feel overwhelmed with one baby, but I cannot fathom. Like I'm so impressed by the way that you have, oh my gosh. I mean, obviously I'm not seeing like the day in day out. I'm sure it gets messy at times, but oh, yeah. honestly, I think there's probably like, would you say there has to be like, um, a grace for that or like, a I don't know what. How has that been? Like, oh what? It, like, how many kids did you want in the beginning? Like, do you still want to have your own? Like, what does that look yeah, like for you guys? Obviously, that might have to change. I don't know. Right. What does that look like? Yeah. So I, I know I, I was thinking about that. I didn't mention that side of it. So, in regards to, to having biological kids, um, we, my husband and I, for the last two years, have not been preventing getting pregnant. And it hasn't happened. Okay. Um, I haven't done any like testing or mm -hmm. looked into that. Um, but it's kind of funny. I think more and more I'm just like, God, is this is this how you wanted to grow mm -hmm. our family <laughs> through these four babies that needed Holy a family? Boy. And maybe wow. that's why I haven't gotten pregnant. Sure. If I get pregnant on top of getting this fourth baby, <laughs> then then we're really gonna need help. But oh um, yeah. So I I don't know. I not that I go back and forth. I think for me, I'm just like in such a place of like peace mm -hmm. for however our family grows. And it's taken a while to get to that point. I think that for like the first year, especially of trying to get pregnant, I was really discouraged and, um, yeah, just like really, really sad about that. And I think now I'm like, I can't even think about oh getting, my pregnant. Gosh. um, wow. And yeah, I think, even now my heart has like changed in a sense where like before, if I had friends that were getting pregnant around me, it's like, I was excited for them, but mm. still kind of like, why hasn't this happened for mm. me? Um, where now I don't feel that way. Mm. I just feel thankful that I get to be a mom. Um, even though that looks different than a lot totally. of my friends and, totally. um, yeah. And maybe our kids will never look like us and mm. that's okay. Yeah. We're good with that too. So, wow. Whatever the Lord has in the future, I mean, I don't think I don't think we'll have like ten kids, so <laughs> we'll have to cut it off at some point. But uh, that's amazing! Uh, wow, wow! I have like a bunch of different questions running around in my head. I'm like <laughs> trying to figure out which one to ask first. Um. Okay, so you'd mentioned uh, that you had you had originally been um, working. Uh, I imagine that you've probably stopped working. Have you stopped working? Um, I, I cut back a lot. Okay. So um, when we had our girls this last year and then getting our three this year, at both times, it was in April. We got both oh, um, wow. of our sibling sets in, in April. And at CBU, the school year ends the end of April. Oh, so timing-wise, wow. it's great because... Um, going into summer, it's a lot slower season for us. Most students are off campus, so we don't do a whole lot of yeah. ministry with students. Um, and to have my husband home a lot more was really helpful. No kidding. Wow. <laughs> but um, right now, we used to live across the street from CBU. Now we're about 10 minutes away. Okay. Um, so going into this upcoming year, I'm not exactly sure how it'll yeah. look. I think at first, I was kind of... Um, having unrealistic expectations of myself. I was trying to still meet with a lot of girls and do a lot of small groups and Bible studies and things like that. And my husband actually was like, Aubrey, like you're, you're raising kids at home. You don't need to like feel like you have to continue doing as much as you were doing before. Like you're, you're doing an important role. Mm. Um, so I think that was really freeing to hear. Wow. It gave me freedom to feel like, okay, I still can have my hand in this ministry, but I don't need to have, you know, five small groups. Or, oh my gosh, um, yeah. You know, I have like t two weekly, and usually that means the girls come over during nap time or after bedtime, mm -hmm. and I get to have some 
sweet time with um, the girls that I meet with. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of my involvement at this point yeah. with, um, yeah. with campus ministry. Yeah. So um, I like to kind of ask the moms I talk to um, sort of about like what are some of their passions in life apart from their family. A lot of times uh, being a mother is like the thing, which I so admire and love. Uh, um, and I also just like to hear, like, do you have any other thing, any other parts of your life that are, bring you joy? And uh, if so, like, obviously this is a new season, but have you figured out ways to take care of your heart and, you know, uh, pursuing those things still? Like, what does that look like for you? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I, right now, um, I don't know. I feel like I'm passionate about a lot of things. Big picture what my husband and I both are passionate about is we would love to someday move overseas with our family long-term. Um, and I don't know what exactly that will look like, but we want to go to like an unreached people group, meaning, um, to a people group that doesn't have access to the Bible or to the gospel message wow. of, of Jesus. And um, in the last couple of years, we've kind of narrowed it down to wanting to go to South or Central America to go wow. to like a Spanish speaking country and then to maybe go to like an area um, within, within that somewhere. Um, that's like our 10 year goal. <laughs> so <laughs> Wow. I mean, there's a lot of things I think that need to happen before sure. that happens. But, but that's not even that long if you think about it. Like, yeah, yeah. that's pretty amazing. And, yeah, we're like, we want to like adopt our kids and yes. uh, finish some some training. My my husband's like in the process of, um, he's in seminary right now. Wow. So i um, working on getting more training on that side of it. Um, both of me and my husband have an education back, background. So maybe we'll like mm. use education overseas and do something with that. But Wow. That's like our big picture, okay. I think, like passion. As far as like little things I'm passionate about, I feel like I'm such a dreamer. And so it's so easy for me to like be like, ooh, this would be a really cool thing to do. Mm-hmm. Like I'm trying to think of an example. <laughs> um, right now, the the thing I want to do, which I probably will try to actually execute in the next like couple months is um just being better at getting to know moms in my community so I we've been trying to like um be a part of um like putting the boys in sports through the city and meeting you know parents that way or going to story time Mm. at the public library and and we live really close to downtown Riverside and so there's um a library right there and I'm like, man, wouldn't it be cool if I could just like invite moms and kids over after Aww. for lunch and like get to know them? And so that's like a wow. thing. I guess that's still under the mom category. No, um, no, that's great though. I love yeah, that. I feel like I just like hearing like, okay, what are ways that I could get to know mm-hmm. and reach like the community that I'm in? Mm-hmm. I think it's because my heart is to like be overseas in the future. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to wait until that's that point. That's so good. That's so, so good. So just trying to think through like practical ways of doing that now. I love it. Um, yeah. I, I think other things like I, I'm trying to become a better reader. I'm not very good at reading books, but I, but I love reading books. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fair. <laughs> you do have three children. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so I think just, um, taking time to like during a nap time or early in the mornings to like set aside time to read books, um, spending time in the morning to read the Bible and just mm-hmm. kind of set my mind right for the day mm-hmm. going into the day. Things like been really good. I just started doing yoga. <gasps> yes. So- yoga. <laughs> Oh, it's so like fun. a self-care little thing. There's like a <laughs> yoga studio in downtown Riverside. And Aww. so I've been going there a few times a week That's and I awesome. love it because I just t- plan it out like timing wise yeah. with my husband. He's able to stay with the kids and it. it's a great little time for me to kind oh, of yeah. unplug. So That's yeah. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> wow. Okay. And I also like to talk about legacy. Um, it seems like that's really on your minds and hearts and uh, yeah. as far as like what you want to leave to your kids. Um, but do you have anything specific that you're like, if this is the one thing that I could leave for them, you know, this is, this is it. Yeah. So something personally that I've like struggled with throughout my life is people pleasing. Um, and I think that because of that, that's something I really 
don't want my kids to struggle with. <laughs> That's like a big part of like, I guess the legacy I want to leave. And I'm, I'm reminded of the verse, um, in the Bible, it's Galatians chapter one, verse 10 that says for, for, am I now seeking the approval of man or of God, or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think for myself and for my family, I don't want to raise my kids to be too concerned about pleasing others and the things that they do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's exhausting. <laughs> and I think sure. as they, as they grow, I want my kids to know that they're loved even when they make mistakes and that they can always be real with me and my husband mm-hmm. and, um, not feel like they have to impress us or always give us the right answer. Um, and I hope that even in times maybe that they do that and it's not what I want to hear at certain points in their lives, um, that I can always point them back to God's word and to Jesus, Mm -hmm. um, in those times. So I think, yeah, my overall legacy is to raise my kids, I think just in the ways of the Lord and to not Mm -hmm. worry about, um, pleasing people. That's so good. Uh, Thanks. So, so good. Yes. That's what I have to tell myself. (laughs) also so (laughs) well I think that's so cool because it's a personal um like journey for you and that flows into them yeah whether you're you know it's not as like it's not like something you're forcing it's like an actual day-to-day thing yeah that you are plugging into your life so it will transfer to them yeah it's so beautiful yeah I I hope so (laughs) and having the verse to back it up is pretty impressive so (laughs) I'm just gonna say (laughs) that's pretty good (laughs) Uh, and uh we'll we'll connect your like social media account um if that's okay Okay. with you just so people can go check you out and your sweet babes um yeah that's fine I had one like random question for you um okay I remember like seeing you do something in December with dresses can you tell me yeah yeah so something I've been a part of for um several years is an organization called Dress Sember and um the founder her name is Blythe Hill and she actually we were good friends um in high school and Mm -hmm. she started this nonprofit. it started as just like a fashion um experiment kind of thing to wear a dress every day for the month of December or to wear different dresses. So now it's become um, a huge organization and there's thousands of women all over the world and men, men will do it and wear like a different bow tie every day um, to, to contribute. But she wanted it because so many people were like catching on to it. She wanted it to be something that was raising awareness. So um, her thing she wanted to raise awareness for was the injustice of um, human and sex trafficking And so she partnered with um, A21 Campaign and IJM, I believe. There may be, I think there's a few other um, organizations, but I know those are some of the big ones that um, she's partnered with in the last few years. And they've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to, um, to go towards organizations to help women and children around the world to be freed from, from slavery. So yeah. Wow. Cool. Well, maybe we'll add links to that, too, because that's kind of a neat thing. Um, I just thought that was cool. I've always wanted to ask you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I was kind of I was lazier about it last year because I had myself and two little girls, but still was a part of it in other ways. But I was thinking, I'm like, (laughs) well, this year I only have one girl. So maybe me and her can do it together. (laughs) That would be so cool. You and Bobby can do it, too. (laughs) heck yeah I was just thinking like oh that would be super fun oh sweet yeah cool Aubrey thank you so much for taking the time to do this it's been so fun yeah of course Um, thank you for asking me it's really special Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It was such a pleasure to have you listen in. If you'd like more information about this guest and other guests, you can check that out on Facebook and Instagram at mommy space. And you can also email me at mommy space at gmail.com. If you want more details or have any questions or would just like to get in touch, I'm always looking for new connections. 
Also, it would mean so much if you could leave us either a rating or review or both on iTunes. This just gets the word out about the show. It's a way that we can get more connected with more mamas out there. And it really helps me out as I am doing this on my own. And sometimes I just need a little lift up, y'all. It's good to hear from you that way. Thank you so much again for tuning in. I hope you have an amazing week. Remember, you are loved, you are enough, and you are doing your very best. See you next week, Mama.